boys and girls, and happy Sabbath. Today I would like to continue with the story we started off last week. And the story, if you remember correctly, was about a commander in the Syrian kingdom, and his name was Naaman. And he was sick, he had leprosy, and ultimately he was looking for a way to be healed. And the only way possible that he could find was from a prophet in Israel whose name was Elisha. Now, boys and girls, as they left and as they started heading, continued heading home, they passed the Jordan River and one of his servants turned to him and said that if the prophet asked him to do something great and wonderful and marvelous, would Naaman not then go and do that thing? But this is something small. Why would the commander not even think about doing this one thing? And why not even try and wash himself and be clean? Now, Naaman went down into the river Jordan and eventually decided to follow Elisha's advice and no, go wash himself seven times in the Jordan River. Now, obviously, this wasn't the cleanest river. It wasn't the most beautiful river. But Naaman decided to give the prophet Elisha and ultimately to give God the opportunity of healing him. Now, Naaman went down once. He went down twice. He went down three times and still nothing changed. He went down a fourth time, a fifth time, a sixth time. You know what, boys and girls, still nothing changed. He was still full of sores and he was still itching. And eventually Naaman decided to go down a seventh time. You know what happened when he came up out of the water, boys and girls? Naaman was clean. Yay. There was no sores. There was no itchiness on his skin. The Bible actually uses the words saying that his skin appeared to be like that of a child. It was smooth. It was beautiful. It was basically almost perfect. And that was amazing. And Naaman jumped out of the water. He was so excited and he decided to head back to the prophet Elisha to go and thank him in person. So let us see what happened when he arrived at Elijah's house. Naaman decided to head back in a rush to Elisha to present him a couple of gifts just to say thank you for what he has done. And when Naaman came to Elisha, he immediately, first things first, acknowledged that God is the only true God. There is no one like him in all the world except for the God of Israel, which was quite spectacular for him to acknowledge because the Syrians were a proud nation. They didn't want to acknowledge anybody was greater than their gods. So this was truly a very big miracle. But when Naaman offered these gifts to Elisha, Elisha politely declined to accept them. He was unwilling to accept anything because he knew that it was only due to God's glory and God's grace that Naaman was healed. So Naaman kept asking him, insisting, please accept, even if it's something, just pick anything in this cart for you. And Elisha still refused to accept anything in return for the miracle that God brought in Naaman's life. So Naaman was also determined in following the living God, the God of Israel, so much so that he decided to take back with him two loads of, of dirt, of ground, because he wanted to build himself an altar to praise God and to worship the God of heaven and earth. And Elisha sent him away 
with peace, saying, may God be with you in your road ahead. So, boys and girls, what happened next was a little bit of an of a interesting twist to this tale. So the interesting twist comes in, boys and girls, when all of a sudden, out of the blue, Naaman hears footsteps coming running along, and Naaman turns around to see who it is, and lo and behold, here we see the servant of the prophet Elisha standing in front of Naaman. Now, this servant's name was Gehazi, and he came and approached Naaman, and what Nehemiah did, boys and girls, was very interesting because Nehemiah stepped off of his chariot and approached young Gehazi. Now, interestingly enough as well, boys and girls, what happened was that Gehazi said that it was his master, Prophet Elisha, that sent him to Naaman. Now immediately Naaman wanted to know if everything was okay, was everything fine, was there an emergency, did he need to go back to Elisha? And Gazi said, no, 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 all is well with my master, but he sent me because there are two sons of prophets who came from a hill country far away from Ephraim. So please would Naaman not sponsor them each a bit of silver and two changes of clothes. So obviously Naaman was all too willing to help, since the prophet really helped him a lot. So, Naaman gave Gehazi what he requested. He gave him a bit of silver, and he gave him, basically, the clothes that he also requested. And you can imagine that this was a small price to pay for the grace that he received in actually being helped by the prophet and from God. And he was more than willing to help. But you know what, boys and girls? This was actually a lie from Gehazi's part. Because Elisha did not send him. There was not two sons of prophets that came from a far country. This was something that Gehazi said because he wanted some of the riches and some of the nice clothes that Naaman offered. So let us see what happened when Gehazi headed back home to Elisha. <music> Boys and girls, when Gehazi got back home to Elisha's place, he hid everything that he got from Naaman. He hid all the clothes, he hid all the silver. And basically, what happened was that when Elisha asked him where he was, because Elisha obviously noticed he was away, Gehazi said, I was nowhere. I was here all along. I never went anywhere. Now, the challenge that we find here is that Gehazi wasn't only lying to Elisha. But it was actually lying to God as well. And that is the danger of lies. We think we only hurt one person, but we actually end up hurting so many more in the whole process. And Elisha actually said to Gehazi, did not my heart go with you? Now that basically means that Elisha knew where Gehazi was. And that was sad because I think Elisha was really hurt by Gehazi's betrayal. What we see happening was that Gehazi left Elisha filled with sores and also the itchy skin, the same that Naaman had. And ultimately, it ended up that Gehazi also had leprosy because of his selfishness, his, his lies, his deceit. And that was a sad day. But, boys and girls, on the other side of the country, where we find that Naaman made his way back home, we see a different picture of a man now excited to follow God, living a life of purity and holiness in the process. So let us quickly jump and see what Nehemiah's life was looking like at this stage. Mm -hmm. 
back at Naaman's home, him, his wife, and the little girl who started all of this big process, worshipped the living God of Israel. Now, boys and girls, there's a big lesson to be learned here. Because the little girl who was taken away from home, taken away from her comfort zone, taken away from her loved ones, didn't end up being sad and sorry for herself. She ended up still glorifying God, even amidst a foreign country with foreign gods, with foreign people, with foreign languages. And she still ended up revealing God's love to a family who might have never gotten to know it if it wasn't for her. But also we find that something amazing takes place because we so often think that it only big people can cause big changes. And here we find a little girl causing a massive change in Commander Naaman and his wife's life. Not only did Naaman follow or start following the living God, but he was also healed from his illness. And that is a miracle in and of itself. So boys and girls, remember that you are not too small to make a difference. You always can make a difference. Remember that. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, that we can make a difference wherever we are, wherever we go. Jesus, we pray that you would start the difference and the change within us so that we might live it out to the people around us. We ask this not because we are worthy, but in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. So boys and girls, have a great day further. And remember, go make that change wherever you go. Bye-bye. Thank mm-hmm. you.